Welcome back to this Tableau beginner tutorial series. This is part four, where we will start building a dashboard. So if you haven't already, go ahead and open up the latest version of this workbook. Again, either by you know going to Tableau Public Online and downloading it, or by opening up a new workbook, logging in and going from there. Okay, so we have all four um, data visualizations that we need. We have our two line graphs, a bar chart, and our table. Now we want to combine it all in a dashboard. So to do that, click on new dashboard. And here it is. This is the dashboard menu. It looks a little different than our sheets. So over on the sidebar now, we have our dashboard. Um, what's, what's it called? I guess size. <laughs> That's right there. So this is the current size of our dashboard. This is the default it does for our um, Tableau Public Edition, which I'm not a fan of whatsoever. You could click Fix Size, where you can customize the exact width and height you want. You can click Automatic, so that it'll actually change based on the size of whatever screen your audience is using. So whether that be a laptop, a phone, etc. I don't like that. I actually like fixed since most people use their like desktop or laptop to look at it. And I'm going to change the height to 900, hit enter, and the width to 1300. That's kind of a standard like dashboard size. Um, oops, that was 1200, not 1300. It's a standard dashboard size that fits most screens. All right, so that's kind of the size piece. Um, beneath that are all of our different sheets. And it's nice if you hover over them, you can see exactly what those sheets are. And that's kind of also why it's important to have a good naming convention for your sheets. Can you, Cause you can imagine if I had 25 sheets and I had to scroll through and figure out which ones I want to put on which dashboard, it helps a lot to have a good naming convention. Okay. We want to throw all of these on our dashboard. So guess what? You can just double click <laughs> and Tableau automatically puts uh, everything onto your dashboard. Like easy peasy lemon squeezy. If you didn't like that, you can control Z. You can click and drag all of these kind of wherever, wherever you want them to go. Like so. You can see that your sheets are what's called tiled. So they sort of snug in next to each other and nothing is overlapping, which can be really nice for organization. If I wanted something to like not be tiled and maybe overlap something in my dashboard, you could click on that sheet and scroll down to floating and click on floating. And now this is no longer bound by these tiles, right? I can kind of move it wherever I want. I don't want that for this particular sheet. So I'm just going to control Z until it goes back to where I want it to go. And also I like to sort of organize things both horizontally and vertically. Technically we have a donut sales and a donut sales right over here. And I prefer these to be stacked on top of each other instead of sort of diagonally. So I'm gonna click on this sheet, not on the bar, but like just above it maybe, it doesn't actually matter. Basically I'm gonna click <laughs> until I see this like gray little um, tile. And I'm gonna hover my mouse over the tile until I see that X, click on it, drag it over until the entire company sales table is highlighted and release. When you see that, it's just going to swap both of those sheets. So there you have it. You've, <laughs> you've done it. You've made your first ever dashboard, which I think is pretty awesome, but you know, it's nowhere near the like level of sophistication and professionalism that we see here. And what you'll find when you are a Tableau analyst is that the majority of your time is actually spent in the formatting stage where you're changing the sort of like default ugly um, Tableau formatting into something that looks professional. So that is going to be the entire focus of this video and the next video. How do we transform the default settings of a dashboard to a professional looking dashboard? 
So to start, um, let us focus on the table. So go ahead and click on the table. First thing that I noticed is that it's tiny. We want it to fill the space. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over here to standard and change it to entire view. Awesome, okay, so now it is at least filling up the space. The next thing I'm gonna do is now that we have everything sort of organized and filled correctly is color. I'm gonna switch over to the final version um, to talk color through. So color can be a very heated <laughs> debate amongst designers and analysts. On the one hand of a dashboard, you do need it to be aesthetically pleasing. If it's ugly, if it's confusing, people aren't going to use it, right? And that's like the worst thing ever is you, you spend hours and hours on a dashboard, you give it to their, your client, and then they don't end up using it. That's not ideal. So you do need it to be aesthetically pleasing. You do need it to be pretty. But sometimes people go too crazy with the design and there's way too many colors and way too many fancy stuff and it takes away from the actual information and data you're trying to communicate. So there has to be a balance and that all comes down to your preference. For me, I try to land somewhere in the middle where it looks pretty to look at, it looks professional and clean and there are colors, but those design elements don't detract from the information but they actually work to enhance and highlight what information I'm trying to communicate. So that's what we're going to try and attempt over here with color. And in order to achieve that, best industry practices for dashboard design is to minimize your color to one color scheme or to two dominant colors. <laughs> that may sound really like limiting, but it's true. Um, if you have more than two or especially more than three, it just becomes too hard to look at. I love blue. Blue is a very, it can be a very neutral color. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna apply a blue color scheme to the entire dashboard. Let's just go kind of left to right, top to bottom, starting with overall sales. In order to change color, it's actually easiest to do it within the sheet, not within the dashboard. So I'm gonna click on my bar graph and I'm gonna click on this icon, which is the go to sheet icon. There we go. Takes me back to my um, original bar graph sheet. Another way I could have done that is just to go down here and click on bar graph. But those are the two ways you can navigate between your dashboard and your dashboard's sheets. I want to apply a blue color scheme to differentiate between these donut types. So currently they're all the same color because there is nothing here to indicate that there should be a difference. So I'm gonna click and drag my donut type pill to color. Et voila, it's hideous. <laughs> the Tableau always defaults to this color palette. So if you click on color, click edit colors, it's gonna take you to this page. And like I said, it automatically defaults to this Tableau palette which is just, you know, it's, it's not the best. <laughs> so I wanna change it. I'm gonna click on that automatic. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to blue and I'm gonna click assign palette and hit apply. All right, I already think that's looking a lot better. But one thing I notice is that, you know, the darkest is on top, the lightest is in the middle and the middle hue is on the bottom. I don't really like that, I would prefer that the the hue differences or the saturation differences sort of match actually the differences in sales. So I'm going to click on glazed and change that to the light blue. I'm going to do that one. Click on chocolate and change that to the medium blue and hit apply. And there you go. That's in my view already a lot better. So there you have it. We have changed our color scheme already. Another color thing that I'm not a big fan of in this particular case is that these two um, labels are white, but this one's black. Not a big fan of that. It's doing it all automatically. So I'm going to click on label. I'm going to click on font and I'm going to click white. I'm not going to do match color or automatic. I'm clicking white. And that way 
everything looks the same. Yeah, it's kind of tricky to read, but it's going to be big enough that people will shouldn't have too much difficulty seeing that value. Cool. All right. There's our color number one. Let's move on to our overall company sales table. Let's go to sheet. Let's make this bigger again. So let's go from standard to entire view. That way the sheet matches the dashboard. So for a table, oftentimes you don't really need to add color, but what can help with a table is there's two ways that you can apply color to a table. One is to highlight values. So you could just highlight a single value or two values in a table to draw people's attention directly to those values if they're the most important. In our case, I want to help my audience understand which of these values is the greatest and which of these values is the lowest to see if there's sort of any trends going on here that we would otherwise find sort of difficult to unpack with just the numbers alone. So I'm going to add a color scheme to this. And this is where it gets a little tricky. I want to add the color scheme, basically have like the lightest blue be the lowest value and the darkest blue be the highest value. In order to do that, I need to use sales. So I'm going to click and drag sum of sales over color. All right. So we're, we're kind of close. It's now changed the text color, but that's actually not what I want. I want this to be an entire box that's filled with the color blue and for this text to be white. In order to do that again, it's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't think I could ever figure this out on my own without somebody showing me. You go to the marks card, click automatic, click square. And so now the color is applied to the square and not to the text. And look at that already using this color scheme, we can see Dunkin' Donuts is freaking crushing it, right? Like all of these are really dark. Um, chocolate is the darkest. Krispy Kreme is definitely in the middle. Chocolate being the darkest. And then Top Pot is pretty much at the bottom, but for some reason, old fashioned, they sell more of than they do chocolate. Right. So this is kind of an example of how color can assist our understanding of data instead of like detracting from it. Now I'm picky. Um, <laughs> the color scheme actually isn't the same as this one, right? It's kind of like an off teal. It's a cool color scheme, but it's just different. So I'm going to click on color edit colors and our window screen is a little bit different because we're using a measure value instead of a um, dimension. So I'm going to click on automatic and then click blue. So now this color scheme matches um, what I see over here with my uh, donuts. So there you have it. We have our bar graph and our table and whoa, wait a minute. Our line graph also changed <laughs> and it changed when we moved our donut type to the color. And that's because any, any sheet that's using like the same color variable, it's going to apply across sheets, which can be really nice, right? Cause that means I didn't have to duplicate my work. Once I changed the bar graph, it also changed this line graph. However, it didn't change this line graph. So we have to manually do that. So I'm going to go to the sheet, go over to color click on edit since we already have company applied there. Change it from automatic to blue. Assign palette. Now this time Dunkin Donuts is at the top. So I'm going to change it to a dark blue. Krispy Kreme's in the middle. So that's perfect. And top pot is closer to the bottom. I'm going to hit apply and hit okay. And there you go. Everything has changed. And look at that. Isn't that already so much better than where we were before? It's really amazing how quickly it, you assign a color palette, how that can totally transform the look and feel of a dashboard. Um, for the last few minutes, like five minutes, we are going to make additional formatting changes to all of these sheets. So one thing is that again, the Tableau default for these sheets is tiny, right? Look at that format. It's like, I think it's like a nine font. It's really, really small. Same for the axes, 
et cetera, et cetera. So we just wanna make things easier for people to read. So you can actually do that in your dashboard instead of having to go to each individual sheet. Let's start with our bird graph. I'm gonna right click on old fashioned, hit format, go to text, go to worksheet and increase it from nine to 12. And look already, that is just so much easier to see. And it did that for both the Y and the X axis. Another thing about this bar graph that I can change is getting rid of redundancy. Since we've added our sales number to the bar graph, technically we no longer need that along our X axis. It's up to you whether or not you wanna keep it or hide it. But I like to, again, get rid of as much redundancy as possible. So I'm gonna right click on the axis and uncheck show header. Ah, again, it's like a relief to the eyeballs. Like just getting rid of noise helps, you know, focus on what's more important. So that was a little bit about the bar graph. It's already looking amazing. Now I'm gonna move over here to Dunkin' Donuts. It's too small. I'm gonna right click, hit format, go to text, go to a workbook or sorry, worksheet and increase it to 12. And it does it for the entire workbook. Now, something that I notice is that this is bolded and, and this isn't. So I'm not a big fan of that difference. So I would like to change it. And it's kind of weird to navigate to. So <laughs> the easiest way is just to right click on it again and hit format. And right here under default header fonts, it's on Tableau medium. So I'm just gonna change that to Tableau book. And now it kind of, you know, it matches a little bit better what's going on over here. Another thing I'm gonna do <laughs> is remove the company field label. So now we're just looking at chocolate glazed old fashioned and then our three companies there. All right, next we're gonna go to this sheet, right click on the axis, hit format, go to text, workbook, change it to 12. Ta-da! And then also actually I can do that over here by just clicking on it going to the same sheet without like making any changes and then increasing it to size 12. All right, we are getting very close to the end. So I'm gonna save the rest of the formatting for part five, where we will finish formatting this dashboard. And then in part six, we will create the second dashboard, which is to look at the expenses, right? Because we've just looked at overall sales but we haven't looked at the overall expenses and how that has changed over time as well. Please, as always, be sure to save. Save this to your Tableau public page and I will see you on part five.